word to capture the, the really the polling that you did? Uh, what, what, what was was the one word you'd pick? Uh, cataclysmic. <laughs> and, and, and why is that? Well, because the public feeling of uh, that the economy is on the wrong track and that their personal lives are deteriorating is overwhelming in this poll with 70% or more saying the economy is on the wrong track, with the notion that, that their personal lives were deteriorating, shooting up so dramatically. Uh, I think that uh, almost 80% either think we're going into a recession or we're in a recession. I think somehow the message of economic doom and gloom has been completely communicated to this electorate, and that makes for a very, very sour electorate. Your polling, Mark, now has the president at 38 percent. Usually he's been in the low 40s in your, in your polls. And obviously this is a very different summer uh, than last summer when Biden basically had some type of honeymoon. Afghanistan hadn't really uh, turned into the debacle that it did. And his numbers were much higher. Um, you see the left is frustrated with Biden. You know, compare the numbers of Biden now to Trump, because it seems like with Trump, he was always in the 40s and he he, he held on to the base. I know you, you made the case, and I agree with you, that he should have gone for more independence. But, but Biden's losing everybody right now, it seems. Well, look, President Trump was seen as erratic and as creating, you know, controversy and division. But... He really wasn't seen as incompetent. And, and so he received generally positive ratings on most issues and held his base even as his ratings on the virus deteriorated. In contrast, since Afghanistan, Biden has been seen as basically unable to do the job. Most people see him now as too old to do the job. Few people want him to run for, for re-election. Uh, and his ratings for the economy and inflation are in the 20s. So, so this is a disaster in terms of a president. I, you know, Chester A. Arthur probably had better ratings uh, than Joe Biden. Uh, big news of the year, the week, the month is is the Supreme Court decision on abortion. What what did you find there? Or what people are thinking about that ruling? Well, that America is reasonably divided on choice. That uh, the Supreme Court missed public opinion, but not by a mile that 55% opposed the ruling, but 45% approved of the ruling. And then when we probe somewhat more deeply, what do Americans really think policy for abortion should be? They, they really think that that 15-week standard makes sense to them. A, a, a strong majority would back a 15-week standard uh, and and actually only around you know 20 to 30% would back uh, 23 weeks or nine months or places where the Democratic left is on choice. So this is an issue that's going to tend to work for the Democrats, but not by as much as people might think, considering that there really is a lot of division on this issue. Do you think that's a way uh, uh, running on abortion that <clears throat> that Democrats can stop the bleeding with with independence, which went for Biden against Trump, but then certainly have kind of abandoned the Democratic Party and helped uh, Glenn Youngkin become governor in Virginia last year? Well, I think the real issue is with suburban women pocketbook voters uh, who I think were, or, you know, if you're in suburbia and you're paying taxes, you're very much concerned about the economy. Usually women are the most concerned about the economy and household finances. Uh, and, and so consequently, they're also concerned about guns and they're also concerned about choice. So does this cross pressure some of those women? Well, it'll be up to the parties to make an effective argument. Uh, they'll have to, you know, the Democrats will say choice has been restricted and women have lost a fundamental right here. And, and Republicans will either want to duck the issue uh, and really trying to pound away at how bad the economy is and how you know, Congress is to blame for the overspending. Who, who is to blame? Well, Joe Biden and, and Democratic Congress. Nancy Pelosi is about the most disliked political figure in the country right now. And Congress came together, and I was skeptical that it was going to happen based upon recent history, but, but uh, did act in a bipartisan way and pass a gun safety measure 
but the numbers for Congress are still low. Why, why, is, why is that? And Congress seems to be getting no credit for, for actually working together and getting a bill to Biden's desk. Well, unfortunately, it was sort of a pebble in the ocean. Uh, I think that uh, that if uh, that we consistently saw that happening in Congress, as opposed to the exception, uh, then then maybe you'd see some fundamental change in how Congress is seen. But but you know, right now it's very hard for the American public to say that anybody's doing a good job. They're suffering higher prices, wage deterioration, inflation gasoline prices that are through the roof going into the driving summer, economic discontent. They're not going to give anybody credit for anything. Yep. And as far as Biden's numbers and his he's getting reportedly frustrated that Democrats are not believing that he is going to run in 2024. Um, he, though, did. And we know this from from our reporting um, is that Biden did consider launching his presidential bid saying i'll only run for one term but then he opted against that he didn't want to be a lame duck and i know democrats don't like the comparison uh, but there are some, some similarities uh to jimmy carter right here as far as inflation gas prices and the economy and we know that uh a lot of people because you mentioned age and joe biden does turn 80 uh later this year uh, do you think there's a there's a possibility because a lot of Democrats are looking for other Democrats to run that, you know, there could be a primary challenge against Biden, even if he runs? I remember, that's what happened to, to Jimmy Carter. Well, uh, I tend to say that we're in a Nixon, Carter, Reagan cycle. Uh, you can kind of figure out from this analogy who Nixon is. The, the candidate, no matter how popular, uh, is basically unacceptable to the elites and has to go and does go. Uh, and. We're in the Carter phase with someone who wouldn't be president, with the exception that Trump was there, or Carter, I think, was a was a ricochet off of off of Nixon, and uh, who had real problems in terms of confidence, or perceptions of confidence, uh, and and here you've got the same kind of thing, and we don't know who the Reagan is, the the new leader that comes in and sets the the you know the course for the country, but boy. People are really looking for new leadership. They do not want Joe Biden running again. Only 30% of Democrats say they'd vote for him in a Democratic primary. I've never seen a situation as bad as this. Um, as as someone said to me recently, yeah, you, but you weren't in the Carter White House. It's, it's true. I don't know how how bad it was. It was there. It got even worse than when they declared a national malaise. But uh, but we're in a national malaise, probably much deeper than they were because people are just so unhappy about the economy. Your polling is also, I think, very good news for Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida. Uh, he is above water, uh, along with uh, Senator Tim Scott, who some people think could run in 2024. Everyone else, basically major figures underwater, including the president, including Donald Trump. And now your numbers also show uh, a 40 point lead of Trump versus DeSantis also shows if Trump doesn't run that uh, that DeSantis has a large almost 20 point lead uh, uh, over Mike Pence. And so that has that has grown. You know, what what is your takeaway? You know, uh, there was a recent uh, poll in New Hampshire that DeSantis actually winning, defeating the former president uh, by, I believe, three points. What, what's what do these numbers mean for DeSantis? And, and do you think he'll 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 get in? Well, I, I think this suggests DeSantis should run, regardless of whether or not Trump won, win, win, runs. He's got a pretty good chance of defeating Trump. It's not a certainty. Trump has a strong base that he has held on to through thick and thin. But there are a lot of people who even like Trump who say, look, he's gotten so uh, tied up in this election thing that he can't really think straight. And the, the public really doesn't want to return to Trump. And we, we could still get, you know, I think they're thinking that they could still get a turn in the Republican Party, you know, in the issues where they'd be comfortable with, with the DeSantis who doesn't have the Trump baggage. Uh, and I think you see the rising numbers for DeSantis reflecting that. Uh, and I think the, the, frankly, the New Hampshire poll was a bit of a shocker because the truth is a, a New Hampshire loss would pretty much end the Trump campaign right then and there. As far as uh, the speculation on 2024, which never stops, it's always uh, fun to talk about it. What if Biden doesn't run? Um, what, what then? You know, Harris's numbers are not great. She's underwater. 
people forget that um, she did not make it to Iowa or in her presidential bid. Do you think she'll get some company based upon her numbers should Biden not run? And obviously, I would think, uh, I sure, sure bet that she would run. Well, I, I think she is now a clear second choice after Biden in the Democratic Party. I mean, only Hillary has some support after that. And Hillary, given the fact that, uh, that she was the nominee, only gets 15 percent support. Harris gets around 25 percent support. It's not a great starting place for a sitting vice president. She's got she's got time and room to improve her standing. Uh, but but most of it comes from this kind of sense that she's not a very strong candidate, hasn't been a strong vice president. I don't know. She could dispel that with some, you know, getting out there on the campaign trail. I don't think those are insurmountable problems for her. And I think there's a lot of momentum towards having the first woman black, uh, you know, nominee that would be really hard to to, to overcome. And there is the general notion that the vice president, whether you're Joe Biden, Walter Mondale, Hubert Humphrey, you get the nomination uh, or even even Al Gore. So right. so it's pretty well, it's not, you know, a scientific truism. It still is a, you know, pretty good uh, situation that seems to develop. And also after the midterms, the vice president, if Biden's not running, will inherit the institutional apparatus of the Democratic Party, uh, which in the old days was an advantage. Yeah, and I would think that um, uh, Joe Biden, if he were not to run, would, would endorse uh, Harris. Uh, like, uh, not, you know, very, very different situation where you know, Obama did not endorse uh, his I, vice president. I don't know. I don't know whether Biden would endorse Harris. Yeah. You know, I don't know if this is going to be a Nixon Eisenhower situation. Uh, <laughs> You know, that would I be interesting. <laughs> There's always tension between the, the president and the vice president, right? <laughs> I don't sense a, you know, a fuzzy wuzzy relationship here. Nope. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but along those lines, the, 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 the nation's thirst, and your numbers show this, uh, they thirst for a third party. Uh, basically, six in 10 would consider a third party. 71% don't want Biden to run. 61% don't want Trump to run. They've been frustrated with the choices that has have been presented in 2020 and 2016. Uh, what do you make of that? Do you think that uh, there could be a potential third party? There's been a lot of speculation about, you know, maybe Joe Manchin could could launch a third party, but you need you need money to, 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 to launch a third party. I think if it's Trump against Biden, there will be a third party. Whether it's a Macron moment or not, it, there is... When we poll this, and it's a spectacular poll finding, it should get, Bob, really good coverage in the Hill, uh, that 60% now say that they would favor uh, an independent moderate if, if uh, Biden and Trump were the nominees from the two parties. I think that would be you know, a really fatal problem for both of these parties that they could pay for for a long time if, if they don't manage to move forward with some new nominees here. Uh, I think that this is really, um, you know, this 60 percent number that would consider an independent moderate. I've never seen a number that high. And I, you know, I polled the benchmark for Ross Perot. I did John Anderson's polling. I have pretty good familiarity with with what I see as an opening. And this is a big opening. The January 6th committee uh, getting attracting a lot of headlines right now. And 64 percent uh, of those polled in your poll said this is harming Trump. What's your make uh, of of that figure? And do you think it's going to play a big role or, or, or in, in the midterm elections or, or not? Uh, I think that it's, it's harming Trump. Uh, you know, it's just kind of bringing up his whole behavior during this period, which, you know, I think looks worse and worse the more people uh, hear about it. On the other hand, Pelosi is also fading. The Democratic Party is fading down to 40 percent approval. I don't really see this January 6th up playing much of a, of a role in the midterms. People care about inflation and other issues. Most people think Congress should be working on those other issues. So I think they're, you know, they're they're inflicting some punches on Trump uh, and otherwise uh, they're, they're not really uh, covering themselves with any with any real glory here. On, on January 6th, the big question, of course, is what's the end game here? This this committee is unlikely to 
to exist next year because the House is very likely to flip and House Republicans certainly are not going to reinstate that committee. So this is this is kind of their end game, it, it appears, and, and they know that. Um, there's been some interesting tension between the January 6th committee and the Department of Justice. And the big question, of course, is will the committee recommend uh, uh, charges against the former president? And then will the Department of Justice pursue them? If, if DOJ did that based upon your polling, you know, what would what do you think that would would mean? I mean, it would obviously very some some Democrats clearly want that, but uh, would be a divisive move. Well, there's you know, when you look at most of the polling on the January 6th committee, it just tends to break down along partisan lines, which is why it doesn't make much difference. With two exceptions, one that it's seen as hurting Trump more than 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 helping him in any way. Uh, and and the, the second is, though, it is seen by, I think, 58 percent as just an excuse by the left to persecute cons people with conservative views. And, and this is where the committee and the Justice Department are stepping over a rather dangerous line. Uh, I think things like the Peter Navarro arrest in an airport and putting him in leg irons uh, when it's, you know, when when Hillary's folks were allowed, given normal congressional subpoenas and allowed to produce materials in an orderly way uh, or not produce them or go to court and contest them. Uh, I, I think this is this is really, you know, creating a, a backlash here that that could could undo uh, much of the work that the, the that the group is doing, and I think if the Justice Department here goes ahead and indicts Trump, and uh, I, I think the the possibility for Trump to come back is it will be made much greater. Uh, I I think that that there's you know Trump will relish that fight. He he will have a high probability of winning that fight. Um, and uh, I, I think it's a mistake. And it's also a mistake in terms of what our country normally does. Our country tries to take big differences like this, and it tries to it tries to bring people together. It tries to create a more perfect union. It tries to, you know, whether it was after the Vietnam War or the Civil War, uh, or even after Nixon with the pardon, right? Generally, the idea is to, to heal the country and bring it together. These kinds of prosecutions are highly divisive. The commission is seen as being as dividing the, as overwhelmingly as dividing the country. I think they've got a good thing. You know, like the biggest problem that people in politics have today is that they just, you know, don't know when to stop. Right. And and I think they they can inflict some serious wounds here. They can make their statements. They can, I think, damage Trump for the presidential campaign and then they should go home. But I, I think if they go ahead and start prosecuting, you know, you know, normal elected officials who thought they were you know, being lawyers, writing memos about legal ways that you could possibly do things and then didn't even do them. I think if they go down this route of route of these kinds of indictments and and it's very odd to me that, uh, the, you know, the Department of Justice is already below 50 percent in approval. Um, you know, the the attorney general here. I think, you know, is is someone who is supposed to be Supreme Court material. Uh, and, and I think I think the way he's handling this, I think, could seriously damage the Department of Justice and, and boomerang. You know, looking at your polling, it's it's really a, a, a tale of two summers. Last summer, as we discussed, Biden was riding high, spiking the ball on COVID. COVID was about to end. Everyone thought everyone thought to be back in the office. Um, and by Labor Day, that didn't happen, and we had different variants. We had Afghanistan, and, and so basically, he was riding high last summer, and now he is he is riding low. Just kind of, a, you just want to get your closing thoughts on what this means, because now we're entering a critical stretch uh, to the midterms, and every time I think you know Biden has hit rock bottom, he goes lower, uh, and 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 it's it's really alarming Democrats right now. Well, uh, you know, if I if I were Democrat in a, in a swing district, I'd be alarmed. Uh, I, again, the you know, what, look when you when you when you look at at what's happened here, the most fascinating thing to me is that the virus, which still has 100,000 cases a day and 300 deaths a day, which was the number one issue for two years, is not even registering as a significant issue. I mean, it just shows you how short term Americans are in terms of their thinking. Right. And I think you do see guns and choice come up as an issue, but inflation and the economy is overwhelmingly the issue. And 
and Biden and the Democrats get low marks on this. And I don't think any of the plans that uh, AOC is offering for the Democratic Party or Bernie Sanders are likely to raise those numbers. So um, if the Republicans get their act together and this is an election about the economy, Democrats are going to be, you know, really thrown for for a, a loop. Uh, if it's an, an election about social issues, I think it could come closer, you know, uh, than it is because I think that 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 the Democrats are winning the social issues, but not by not by overwhelming numbers. The economic numbers are just are just overwhelming, and uh, it's not just a tale of two cities of two summers because. Because it's not just that, oh, Afghanistan went badly and I can't trust Biden on foreign policy. It's I can't trust Biden on crime, on immigration. And most importantly, I could forget all that if I were a voter, if I wasn't angry about the economy. And as your polling shows, there's a lot of a lot of anger there. And as you know, this is, these are worse numbers than uh, during the pandemic. So it, it's looking pretty ugly. And the problem for Democrats, as you know, Mark, we've t discussed a lot how politics can change very quickly, but inflation doesn't change very quickly. It is it is here to stay. And that's that's a huge political problem for, for Democrats. And just don't forget one last thing I'll, I'll make is that let's say these midterms go poorly. You already see the Democratic Party, you know, grumbling ab about Biden. Biden will be sitting there saying, I want to run again. Why shouldn't I run again? I'm president. And uh, the Hunter Biden story may come up. Republicans will be in Congress. There'll be an investigation. A lot of these materials, frankly, don't look good for the president in terms of his story that he he knew absolutely nothing about his son's business dealings. Uh, and and the Republicans could do two, three, four months on that. And and, you know, that could be just another kind of kind of element here that pushes the Democrats to get a to get a new nominee or or uh, allows Biden to you know exit in some graceful manner. Yeah, no, you're right. If if one or both chambers flip, you're going to see investigations on Hunter Biden. You're going to see oversight of the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, and also uh, Tony Fauci uh, will certainly be hauled up before Congress. So uh, it, that would that would certainly be interesting in 2023. Well, thanks, Mark. That was great polling. But look, one last thing I'm going to yeah. tell you. One last thing is look at what happened in New York when Andrew Cuomo resigned and and Kathy Hochul, who was a relatively unknown, right? Then got to be governor of New York and and kind of kind of cruised into you know a primary victory. We'll see we'll see how she does, but I think Democrats will look at that and say, well, maybe if Biden pulled back and 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 you know allowed Harris to be president, that you do a much better job than than people think and have a real chance of winning. That maybe that's better than than Biden trying to get you know all four years in. I don't know. There'll be some tough decisions if the midterms are a wipeout. Uh, let's stay tuned as the polling gets closer and closer. But attitudes are the, the economy. They are locked in and getting worse. Indeed.